This is the Earth Science Classroom. This is a soil science video looking at the pH of soil. So our planet is covered in a wide range of landscapes and terrains. And this is dictated by the climate, elevation, latitude, sunlight, seasons, and the amount of rainfall and type of rain that is going to hit the ground and how much water it will go through the ground into the soil. So the soil is a fantastic medium between all different spheres and the pH of the soil is a very clear defining variable that we can look at in the soil. So the pH of the soil is a very important entity or characteristic that we can look at and focus on in this video. So let's check out what actually is pH. pH in chemistry is related to all forms of science in terms of looking at the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution. Chemists can evaluate the health of soils through the analysis of the solution or water within the soil and measure the pH on a certain scale. This scale goes from 0 to 14 and the middle section, the middle part is obviously 7 and there are certain terms associated with each part of this scale going from 0 to 14. Now we'll start at 7 which is neutral which means that the concentration of hydrogen ions which is the H and the concentration of hydroxyl group or hydroxyl or hydroxide or hydroxyl ion is the same, the same amount, equal value, equal numbers. If there are less hydroxyl ions and more hydrogen ions in the chemical reactions within the solution, then the pH number drops down towards zero and that becomes acidic or an acid. If on the other hand, there is more hydroxyl OH negative ions in the solution and less hydrogen ions due to the chemical reactions, the pH number will actually increase above seven up to 14 and we call that alkaline or basic. So the concentration of hydrogen ions dictates the acidity of the solution of the soil and this would control the rate of reactions and enzymes and a lot of different geobiochemical processes go along with the pH scale or the acidity of the soil. Scientists have looked at the different nutrients in terms of their effectiveness and their availability at certain ranges of pH and come up with a scale just for soil in terms of the generic average soil in those different types of what is the best acidity for each or majority of the nutrients for the soil and the elements and the ions. So it goes from 3.5 which is very strong acid up to a 9 which is again a very strong alkali and there's different ranges so 3.5 to 5 is very strong acid and then we're going kind of decreasing the acidity or increasing the pH number up to through strong which is 5.1 to 5.5 to moderate 5.6 to 6 to slightly acidic 6.1 to 6.5 into neutral zone of acidity which is 6.6 to 7.3 and then we go into the alkaline basic levels of the acidity which is 7.4 to 7.8 which is mild alkaline or mild basic and then moderate to strong is 7.9 to 9 on the pH scale. So there's a range. Now most of the plants are going to, most of the nutrients are going to like a slightly acidic to neutral level of pH. And a fun fact is the CO2 in the atmosphere creates rain that is slightly acidic. So rain generally is between 5.5 to 6.5 on the pH scale. So acid rain, the term we all have heard about, acid rain is rain that has enough hydrogen ions to push down the pH to below 5.5. So where does this pH come from in the soil? Well first we have again the rain precipitation which contains CO2 in the water which will form carbonic acid in the soil and this will release hydrogen ions into the soil plus organic material the breakdown the decomposing using decomposers and enzymes and chemical reactions in the organic material in the humus making creating colloids and a, a mixture of clay colloids will basically adapt and change the pH the amount of decay and 
leaching and percolation of material down through the soil is going to create a different or a certain pH range. And microorganisms like a 6.6, 7.3, a neutral range of acidity. And this would then increase or be a catalyst for the breakdown of organic material and the cycling of nutrients like the carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus cycles within the soil. And the exchange and fluxes between water and the atmosphere through the soil. So the influence pH is huge within the soil. It's a, ma it's a very large influence on biogeochemical processes, and it also is going to affect the availability of plant nutrients within the cation exchange capacity of the soil in the, in the certain horizons, the B and the E horizon, and how the roots are going to uptake not only the water through mass flow, but also the nutrients from the colloids and the humus and organic material which would then affect obviously the plant growth and another big part of the pH is the parent material the rocks that are being broken down and weathered through erosion and the breaking down of the rocks is going to release the minerals and electrons and ions and elements into the soil for leaching and percolation which would again affect the pH so the parent material and the rain which again the more rain the certain climate is going to influence the rate of weather and erosion and obviously the parent material and the type of rocks this all goes into creating a generic pH range however the soil is very good at buffering it has a very high buffering capacity which means that the soil pH is going to stay at a certain level and it's going to resist a sharp change over a short period of time now this could change slowly but it's going to resist change initially over a period of time through the cation exchange capacity and the flux and movement of both the cation and anion ions between the colloids, the humus, and the root nodules and the water. So in conclusion, the pH is the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution within the soil, and this controls the nutrient exchanges between the colloids and the roots, and the acidity of the solution, the water has been percolated and leached down through soil layers. And the extensive root systems, we can look at the root system, look at the cation exchange capacity, we can look at the rates of percolation and porosity and permeability through the soil and the rates of water flow. We can look at the climate, look at the parent material, the growth of soil, the level of maturity of the soil and how many layers it has, the E horizon, and really combine all of these things to look at the soil pH and how it's going to affect the nutrient uptake of the roots and plants to progress the development of plants, vegetation and flora on that particular soil, that location, based on the climate and other factors like elevation and gradients and water flow. And we can also look at the range of pH which affects the nutrient uptake, which is between 6 to 7.5, which is the around the slightly acidic to neutral range on the pH scale. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. And if you like more on this content, please check out my channel which has all these videos on earth science.